everybody and welcome to Falcon Checks Out Windforge, or, you know, check it out, uh, maybe you'll make a series of it, who knows, we'll see, depending on your, uh, I guess, uh, your interest in the series itself. But a few of you guys have actually told me to check this game out, it just came out recently on Steam and whatnot. I've heard there's a bit of bugginess with the game, a lot of, uh, weird crashing, a lot of, uh, corrupted saves, which is kind of terrifying, especially for something like a Let's Play, but, uh, uh it's kind of like, um, as it comes type of thing, not everybody runs into it, just certain people, so hopefully I'm not one of the individual few that run into it. But either way, Windforge, kind of a game like, uh, I would say, compared to with like Terraria or Starbat. I don't like comparing games straight up because then it sounds like a ripoff of it. But, uh, to give you an idea as to what to expect, something like Terraria or Starbound, maybe like uh, Magicide, which I've uh, covered recently on the channel. Uh, a game along those lines, just kind of survival, crafting, side-scrolling, building, yada yada yada. But either way, enough of me talking about the game, how about we just show you the game and that'll make you kind of understand it a bit better, right? Let's go, let's choose into a new game here. Alrighty. This kind of be like a little a story introduction. There's a little bit of RPG elements into it, but just mostly based on a storyline to kind of give you quests as to what to do. So you're not just kind of dropping in the middle of nowhere and kind of like not building anything at all, you know, or just building without actually progressing the story. So it's a nice little mixture for sure, from a little I've played anyway. Our modern way of life on Cordia is relying on refined whale oil. Everything from the machines we use to the food we eat is ultimately dependent on oil. We are so hungry for oil that the once abundant population of whales is dwindling. At the current rate, we are harvesting whales as noble species face a certain extension in a short few years. To avoid falling back into the age of isolation, we need a new source of energy. It is said that an ancient people named the Aederkeen had exotic sources of energy. Energy beyond anything we have seen before. Unfortunately, research related to the Aether King is strictly forbidden by law and taboo. You have been secretly hired to uncover this ancient energy source in an attempt to save our way of life. Alrighty, and this will give you like a, a little bit of to kind of create your own guy. I'm gonna make something really wacky though here, so let's go with, uh, I, I don't know, Captain Blue Bot. Uh, whether that means his pants or his ass, no, we'll just leave it up to speculation. Uh, male, sure, why not? Not because I'm not going with a male just because he's a captain. Females could be captains too. Uh, and hair color, let's go with something really wacky, like green, you know, just to, let's let everybody just question this individual together. And Butcher, yeah, sure, why not? There's a few other classes you could choose, and they all have, like, you know, some of them are better at, like, like, this guy's, uh, a good sailor, so he's good at the flying aspect of the game. This guy is a merchant, so he's better at, like, you know, quick-witted answers and, you know, just, I guess, merchant merchantile, I should say. Yada yada. But we're gonna go with the Butchers, because it's a lot easier, uh, at least what I think so. He's got strength and an able body. And he's got no form of education, so he kind of relates to me in a sense, so... <laughs> so much for that. I'm sorry, parents. I... You never paid for my tuition! Well, <laughs> either way. Uh, Karen. That ruin to the right should be the one Thora told us about. Check it out and see if you can find a translation tablet. Alright, so that's what we're doing here, obviously. Um, the game works with the WASD system pretty basic. Uh, e to use a few items and open up and stuff like that. You jump around with space. Um, the right click lets you just shoot, or I should just say left click lets you shoot. Right click lets you do this little, um, yeah, that. <laughs> Let's not go down there right now. How this works like, it's kind of like a little bit of grappling hook, and then you move up and down with W and S, and then you can kind of jump with space again on it. You can even swing yourself on it, but it's pretty much the name of the game here. And then over here, your little space, or the hot bar keys, uh, you got one, two, three. You can switch over to two. This is actually, uh, what you use to kind of break stuff down. You got yourself a knife. This kind of uses, you can use this as a weapon, but at the same time you can knock down a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, some, I guess some of the softer ingredients, so to say. So let's open this up and let's uh, proceed down over here to get you into the uh, feel of this game. Um, let me j switch over to my actual strong weapon to give you an idea. So you see these trees over there, they look like they're kind of in the background. Well, some of them are, but this right here, boom, you can bring it down. And then you kind of connect, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> that was a little bit too fast. You can kind of connect um, everything that's going on over here. So you, see, you can see right there, boom, bring all that down, no big deal there. Uh, bring this down right there. So, obviously, there's going to be a big building type of aspect to this game, as you can imagine. All that down, all good. Same with this. And, you know, it's not only limited to the trees, as a matter of fact. Just about everything that you see could be, um, pretty much, uh, dwindled down. So, that's what's really cool about this. Uh, another thing that's cool about it is that it's going to make me want to... You know, the compulsiveness in me is going to make me just want to do this non-stop and, like, kind of, uh, ignore my other duties, like, you know, continuing the quest here. But you know what? It's kind of like I kind of want to, uh, you know, collect, uh, resources for whatever I want to build in the future, man. So, uh, I kind of have to... Right, I'm done fucking around there. Right, let's just proceed onward here. So, uh, let's see. This is the temple that she spoke of. 
You could basically, oh, let's just let the tutorial do the uh, talking for me. Use your jackhammer to break blocks and whatnot. So press two to equip your jackhammer. Well, I already did that, man. So right here, just talking about this little uh, area here. You need to knock this down in order to kind of proceed through it, right? And you jump with space, jump with space, go through doors with E. No big deal there. Uh, use the left mouse to shoot. So I quit my gun. Now this uh, vicious beast over here, a little bit uh, awkward if you ask me. It's like a dog mixed with a lion. And he apparently has the capability of a flying squirrel, which kind of makes me really question what these uh, developers were under when they created this creature. But I guess we'll just shoot him there and he's just gonna, he's, he's already, he's content with just being shot by the way. He's not gonna really try to get out of your way or even try to get up there and attack you. I mean, he's a flying squirrel. I figured he has like a beast of a fighting chance of jumping up here and like attacking us. But no, he's just gonna go ahead and take it. So, you know, good for him, I guess. Quite the uh, sturdy individual in his beliefs. Over here, eat a break. And this will give me some rifle ammo. So basically, all those pots and like random items that we'll find, you can break them for any extra items. Uh, to jump down, it's going to have like a little bit of uh, the Castlevania type of aspect. You press down and jump to go down. I kind of like that, though. I like that in games. It's uh, reminiscent to what I grew up with. And over here, um, as you can imagine, you can break this down. But let me zoom out here a little bit. You could fall down. I don't think you'll die down there. But right now, let's actually proceed down this way. And there is another pot over here for us to break. Gives us a little bunny, 307, excellent. And then here is a chest. Is this the item that we're looking for? A lifestone fragment, all right. Not what we're looking for. And let's just bring this down. As you can see, you can also even break down the eye. Oh, oh there. <laughs> oh, and there are traps abound like so. Thankfully, that was just like a little bit of a, uh, I guess, tutorial trap where it's kind of like, yeah, we'll put a platform there so you don't impale yourself, but uh, you might want to be careful for traps. You can actually break down these spikes though, so. Um, Unfortunately, you can't use, uh, I thought that the spikes would give you, like, your own material, but they don't do that indeed. But, again, keep it in mind, there's gonna be traps involved in the game as well. That's kind of the tutorial's way of telling you, hey, you know, be careful, bro. Let's continue onward over here, and let's open this up. Good. I hear that dog man again. Oh, God, dog man. Don't do it, dog man. Oh, I'm using a ride dog man. Oh, I've never done this before, but I actually like this fighting a lot better. I was really uncalled for. <laughs> I'm sorry, dog man. I didn't mean to belittle you by riding you that way. As a matter, that's really cool. I did not know you could actually ride those dogs. That was just by chance alone. All right, we're gonna get some more leather off of him, and let's break this up there, and it's gonna give us some fist nuts. All right, well, whatever floats your boat, man. And let's open this up and see what's about here. This looks like a certain material I don't have just yet, so let me switch over to my jackhammer and break this shit down. Again, um. Think of this like um, Craft the World if you checked out that series from me. Um, there's a, a f outward layer and an inner layer, right? So um, just because there's gravel up here, it doesn't mean that there's going to be nothing in the back. There's going to be, for instance, gravels here in the back and then in the front we have dirt, right? So, um, and also doing this is not a glitch. That's just literally telling you that there is an open area in that part. So what we did is that we knocked down the outer wall and it showed us what's inside. And unfortunately inside is kind of hollow, so um, it kind of worked out in that advantage right there. So don't mind me if I'm just kind of uh, collecting a few of these. I might, if I make the series out of this, I might cut some of this off. Like if whenever I go like hunting for certain um, resources, but this is part of the game as you can imagine. Yeah, it depends on if you guys are interested in it too, by the way. But yeah, um, I, I would indeed cut some of that off just because I'm really compulsive about how much I collect. You know, just kind of anal that way, man. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up and that's already searched. Lifestone fragment, all good. And again, again, there's a front area and there's a back area. So be sure that when you're doing your uh, own uh, jackhammering of your kind, <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, apologize. But uh, when you're doing your own, uh, I guess, the resource management of your own kind, make sure that you're not only getting the front item, but the back item as well. Uh, let's kind of go in forward here. That's why I kind of uh, compared it to Craft the World in that sense, because in Craft the World it has two layers of items. That thing's going to be where we're shooting at us, so let me switch over to my gun. And unfortunately for me, I can't shoot through the wall, much like that creature can. Or not really a creature, but mechanicoid, I guess, uh, too advanced for us type of uh, thing right there. So it's fine, I'll just hang out in the doorway, get a few shots in there. No big deal. It's almost about done, I'd imagine. I never really understood shooting at, like, mechanoid type of things, though. Like, it doesn't seem like it'll do that much damage, though, does it? I mean, considering... I mean, considering the fact that right now... Okay, it's gonna shoot two of at once. Oh, it must be nice to be able to shoot through the walls, you fucking cheating dick. But, uh, considering the fact that we're here to kind of find, like, some sort of, uh... I don't know, ancient technology from this, uh... I guess, race that we're not supposed to be associating with? Considering that, it's kind of really, uh... Off-putting that, 
you know, our typical lowly human plebe guns could bring down a, a defense system like that. Uh, let's see here. Right, and that was just kind of, that's basically where we came in through, went around, so we can't all the way around. You could also build blocks in this game, so you could, um, you know, kind of make yourself shortcuts and things to that degree. Um, now, Falkenheim, I suppose to get up here. Just jump up, Falk. Makes sense. All right, make this over here. We get some butterballs, which apparently look like berries, so... I don't know, the only butterball that I know of is either, you know, when you're belittling a fat person or, uh, butterball turkeys. I love Christmas. I mean, not Christmas. Well, I love Christmas too, but I love, uh, Thanksgiving's kind of my thing, man, just because of the turkey. That's, the, I think, the one time a year that I actually eat good. Um, I miss that. Right-click to use your grappling hook. Well, I know how to use my grappling hook, man. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, again, I mentioned right-click would do this, and then you can move up and down with W and S. I guess the tutorial will tell you as well. You can jump up by using the space bar. Really basic, really common. Nothing really too sketchy right there. The mechanic for the um, grappling hook itself isn't probably that refined at times, but it'll get you by. Uh, money, I haven't really... Uh, I've been collecting money, and uh, before I started recording, I should say in the interest of full disclosures that I did try this area out already, and a little bit of the next area, but just so I could I kind of understand as to what the game was about and, you know, how it works, so I'm not over here like, oh, how do I do this? You know, I kind of wanted to give you guys the, a little bit of a actual interesting or at least informatic type of uh, walkthrough here in a sense. Not really a walkthrough. Oh, hey, Dragon Man, I forgot about you. Oh, no, Dragon Man! Okay, uh, when I dealt with this guy before, he just cautiously hung out back there and let me kill him from afar. Um, it doesn't seem like we're gonna be playing that game this time, and much like in the fantasy of all these guys, it must be nice to be able to shoot through the fucking materials while I can't do that, or can I? I don't think I can. Well, I could kind of shoot through it a bit. But I'm not gonna hit him even though I do. Again, though, it's not a big deal. He's gonna hang out right there. As long as you just move back and forth, you'll be able to get a few shots in there. Hit him at the Labanza a bit, whatever that means. I've always really wondered what Labanza means. I always hear, like, you know, I guess Italian mobsters. Not really Italian mobsters, but Italian mobsters on television or in Hollywood as they portray the mask. They're always like, you know, I hit you in the Labanza or something like that. Oh, I'm glad that didn't hit me in my Labanza. All right, and there he goes. Dead to the world, no big deal. Acid Basilisk Scale, Lifestone Gem, Basilisk Me. All right, so it's a Basilisk, not a dragon. You know what, to me, anything with, like, a reptile that's a huge uh, size, uh, <laughs> not that way, guys. Apparently, uh, there's a fire outside, too. Uh, ignore those, uh, fire j or those fire, uh, cries out there. Well, not fire cries, but fire sirens, I should say. Alright, let's bring this down here a bit. So, let me check out what's over here. Iron ore. You know what? If we get some iron ore, it's probably not a bad idea, considering in the next area, we will be needing iron ore to kind of, uh, accomplish one of our first quests. Now, I mentioned quests in this game. The quest system kind of works like, you know, um, again, I'll knock it back to, like, Starbound or, uh, to, uh, at least craft, let's say let's craft the world, because I've covered that in my channel before. So, you know what? In craft the world, you have, like, certain quests, like, build so-and-so item and yada yada yada, and then you have to build item by acquiring the typical, like, the items required to build that item in order to fulfill that quest. Well, that's kind of basically what you're getting into with this game. Like, there will be quests like that where it's kind of like, oh, you need to, uh, build this, uh, smelting iron or smelting, uh, stove. In order to do so, you need so-and-so items, and that is basically how the, I guess, uh, excavation resource management comes into play. Which I like. I, I really do enjoy that, believe me. So, um, I do know for a fact, because, uh, I am apparently psychic, and <laughs> I can foresee the future that I'm gonna need iron ore in the in future. No, but that's only because I've actually played through that part just yet. So, um, I do know I'm gonna need some iron ore, so at least we got a little bit of a head start right there. We're gonna need a little bit more than just what I got, though, so that's something to keep in mind. This over here I thought you could kind of knock down, but otherwise you can't. But it kind of looks like a, a, like, I don't know, like a really... It looks like a knockoff Pokeball, though, doesn't it? Like something you'd find in downtown. Alrighty, um, and there we go. We get the, uh, tablet. Now, the whole, I guess, um, temple's gonna come apart, so you need to hurry the fuck up out of here. So it's probably best that I switch over to my jackhammer. And we could just take a little shortcut through here, I'd say, right? I haven't tried this before. I kind of went the regular path, but, you know, let's just be really adventurous and just try to see if I could just cheat the system and be like, yeah, you know what? Fuck that. I don't really care about, uh, okay. Well, I cared about that. Let me see if I could, uh, well, not, I wasn't trying to grapple hook that. Let me grapple hook up through there. All right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so again, you're not really bound by anything to be like, oh yeah, we have to go down this way. You, you don't have to, but um, you will die. Apparently, I got impaled, and um, 
Apparently I got impaled and uh, broke my knees at the same time, so that's really quite impressive. Let's try this again. Uh, so yeah, fall damage uh, is indeed a fact part of the game too, so you have to worry about that. Uh, you know, I'm still going to do this again though. Just because I believe it did work a bit better for us. Oddly enough now, I'm not sure if it's like a glitch or kind of like an oversight, but now that uh, I died and I have the tablet, the tempo is no longer falling apart. As you can see. So, I mean, if you die once, I guess, then you're cool, you're out of the, uh, you're quite fine, you just have to kind of, uh, take your time now. So, cool, hey, there you go, guys, a little bit of a tip for starters, you know, if you don't want to hurry up, you don't feel like being rushed, that's fine, just die once, and you're good. The temple forgets that it's supposed to be falling apart, and you can just kind of go back to the start, and, you know, none's the wiser. <laughs> Alright, so let me just try to get back there. Uh, I'm not sure what to even, uh, mention now that this has happened, uh, normally... That run back is a little bit of a, supposed to be a bit of a tense situation, but uh, apparently it's not the case anymore. Jump up around over here, jump up, jump up and get down, that's where we excavated the first time around. Alrighty, and there we go. Karen, what happened over there? We need to get out of here, it looks like it's going to explode. Really? You could have fooled me, it doesn't look like it's exploding right now. Oh, now it is. I guess I'd remember that it's supposed to do that now. Alright, later on, Temple. Catch you around. How you doing there, baby? Alrighty, a massive explosion from the nearby ruin rips through your ship and destroys your electronics beyond repair. As your ship spirals downward out of control, you brace yourself for impact. It's quite the impact indeed. Alright, so what's going on over here? As you can see, our ship's kind of jacked up now, so the next thing in line is going to be uh, recovering this ship. Uh, building it back up, making it, you know, be able to fly again, so we can continue on our Sky Pirate journey. A little bit like this is, uh... Oh god, it's gonna fucking bug the hell out of me. There's this game, GameCube and Dreamcast, uh, Tales, Skies of Arcadia, right? Sky Pirates. It's all about Sky Pirates, man. Either way, um, let's go ahead and wrap it up here today, guys, and it's kind of a little bit of introduction to it, a little bit of a spotlight look at it. If you guys are interested in more of this, then I will continue playing it. No big deal. But, um, I'll put it out first and let's see what the, uh, masses of YouTube want and, you know, viewers and whatnot. So, um, once again, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this look at of uh, Windforge. And if you want to see more, let me know. Let me know through the comments, through the likes, and, uh, you know, we'll produce a bit more. Other than that, I will catch you next time.